Welcome to the One in the Shoebar podcast with Sujia and Ed. We're just two Asian Americans talking shit about shit. And Jilly. Yay! <laughs> She's not going to be talking too much shit, I you think. You may notice we are in a different space because of reasons, and I'm much more comfortable here. Yeah, we wanted a couch. We wanted a couch. And we then we were relax. like, you know what? Let's just change everything. If, if you build it, they will come. And they is Jilly. <laughs> she <laughs> She's a very good girl, and she's going to be our new co-host. Right, girl? That's right. She's very sweet. Hi, Ed. Hi. How are you? Good. How's it going? It's this good. is nice. I like. I, I think like this is this. great. I'm so much happier. I feel just so much more comfortable. Squishmallows. I got my dog. Like this is the fucking best. This is my first time experiencing a squishmallow. What is in these? Can somebody please know. tell me? Also, better question. Can somebody make <laughs> us versions of these that don't feel racist? <laughs> yeah, preferably from an Asian person. Yes. But if you can make us a version of these. Wouldn't we'll that be pay the you cutest? And plug you. That sounds weird. Did we say pay? Did we say offer to pay? We, we haven't made any money yet, and <laughs> just wait. <laughs> we will plug you. You can be a producer. You'll get a producer credit on the show yeah. for an episode. Please make us squishmallows and please make me not too round. And you Thank can make you. one of Jilly too. You, you want one too? Okay, don't distract me. I have a job. <laughs> She's like, me too. Look cute. I know. How was your week? It was good. I always, Are you certain? You know, by this point, you would think that I would think out my week knowing that's going to yes, be yes. But would. every time I'm like, what happened in my week? You know, my week was pretty good, I think. Um, just ate a bunch of fried chicken. A bunch. I've been eating a lot of meats. I've been like chugging cocoa water i was gonna say you're just like tempting the fate of gout the gout fate yeah my foot even felt a little weird for a day or two but i like chugged so much that i think i offset it but it was like on the brink eating meat for you guys though you know yeah you're doing it for the people yeah Yeah. i'm sure they're feeling very um honored (laughs) (laughs) uh but other than that um i went to the korean festival the other day right that was fun thanks for thanks for telling me Thank you for telling me that that was happening. Um, it was on a Sunday. Like, you yeah, were working. I, was, I, you know, I can sometimes alter my schedule for half. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. Um, yeah, no, I figured it was during work hours. It, or everything always is. But if I did tell you like a week or two in advance, maybe. No, I wouldn't have gone. Okay. I have to work. <laughs> it was pretty fun, though. It was, I was actually really mind blown at how many Korean people there were. I'm going to make a video about all the food I ate. But there you was were this, mind blown that there were Korean people at the Korean festival. There was just no, I just like how many oh, volume, like the, yeah. the quantity, quality, yeah, no, yeah. not even just the attendees. But for instance, there was this one tent that had a bunch of vendors in it, mm. and I walked through it, and there was like hundreds of these Korean vendors, and oh, I was cool. just like, yeah, I was That's just like, awesome. wow, this is amazing. Next year, mark it in my calendar. I'm gonna go. That sounds. That's really what fun. happened this year. Yeah. Last year, I didn't realize it had happened until afterwards. And I was like, next year, I have to go. I have to go. I have okay. to go. Okay. Oh, cool. We should do an episode from, from there. Yeah. We'll that'd talk be to fun. them. Have your people call my people. That'd be yeah. so fun. There was a lot of food. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That sounds great. And uh, something else that we'll talk about in a second. But how was your week? It was good. Uh, it was my birthday on Saturday. I didn't, I don't talk about it. <laughs> Surprise. Dang it. I think I had it in my phone. I don't, I don't, I don't announce things like that. Happy birthday. Thank you. No, it was fine. It was fine. I, my week was very, Dang very it. full. I feel really stupid because, um, I literally asked Monica when your birthday was and put it in my phone <laughs> and I don't think my phone. Ron, you look so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we literally were even like, we're going to get Susie this and this. And somewhere along the line, ADHD. And I was just like. It's fine. I don't make a production of my birthday. Like my husband like is always trying to insist. He's a Leo. So he like is always like, it's my birthday. So we're going to do something really big. And my birthday, I'm like, can we just let it just kind of come and go? Like, What's after Leo? What are you? Uh, well, after Leo is Virgo, but I'm a Libra. We already passed the whole other thing since. Oh, okay. Yeah, August through September, like the beginning of October oh. is Virgo. My sister's a Virgo. Um, I'm a Libra. And so I just, oh, okay, bye. She's come back, okay? Enough. Okay, we'll see you later. <laughs> bye, Jelly. I wish you guys could see what she's doing. <laughs> she's so cute. Good she's girl. Going to Ron. She's going to see Ron. She loves Ron. Um, so one night I went to dinner with my family, including my parents. Then I went to dinner with just my husband. And then I went to dinner with my kids and my husband. So I had, you know, three different birthday dinners. So Where were they? 
Um, what did you eat? We just went to like this family restaurant, like local leaf with my parents. Cause it was my parents, my sister, her husband, her two kids, my husband, my two, it was like 10 oh, people. Yeah, so we just went to this like family, mm -hmm. like dinery type place, which is great. And then uh, my husband and I went to this place called Some Night and Market, which is like on Lincoln uh, in Venice. And it's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, Thai I've food. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. so good. It was so good. It's in Venice. If you guys are ever in Venice, it's called Some S-A-H-M, delicious Thai food. And then we went and took the girls to like a fancy steak dinner um, in Manhattan Beach to a place called the Arthur J which was just like a, like a very like traditional steakhouse. We had like shrimp cocktail and crab legs and steaks. And the waiter was so wonderful. He made the girls feel like, I, I like, you know, they're, they're young still. So we don't take them out to too many like super fancy things. Um, and so we went and they like got dressed up and they had like drank like Shirley Temples and like, you know, Arnold Palmer's out of really uh, crystal glasses. Oh, fancy. They were just like feeling really fancy. And it was really fun. The food was really, really good. So I just, I feel bloated and I feel so like I've had so much sodium. So I'm just coming down from all the food. And then he brought us like three desserts. I was like, dude, come on, good girl. All the sugars and stuff too. That's the one thing I'd hate about the birthdays. Is I like know. All the, all the sugars that oh, we eat. Chili, you're so sweet. Aye. She's Isn't she the sweetest? Yeah. She's such a good girl. I feel bad for my other dog. He didn't get to come. You smell like coconuts. <laughs> you smell like coconuts. See, she's a great addition to the show. Oh, you see what I love how she keeps saying that. Like she had to convince us. I know. I was like, I was like, yeah, bring her in. She's like, yeah, great. but like she'll be fun. And I was like, I already said, I yeah. Like, she's a really good girl. She's just gonna sit there and he's, yeah. he's like, I didn't say no, you crazy bitch. Yeah. I was like, I love dogs. I just don't want to like impose like my. You know, like I know you guys are dog people, but like some people just like oh, don't yeah. get it. like kids. No. Some people are kids people and some people are not. And like, I am very like aware of when I go into spaces that are not designed and meant for children. Um, and I'm always like, especially to my kids, I'm like, you guys have to be on your best behavior because people who don't like kids are going to really not like you in this particular space. Yeah. So like, like, like the steak restaurant, you know what I mean? Like it's not a place where kids can be, and, and they're older, so they're not Candy like that. Kids, yeah. But like this is not Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. You know, you're not running around going you're not crazy. Not gonna get like crayons. Yeah, there's no ball sheet. pit. You yeah. know, there's no crayons and placemats, and so it's like you have to, you, right? Exactly. Like I was people like paper. <laughs> expect a certain amount of decorum in those spaces, and I don't like to ruin it for other people. So you know, I'm 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 vigilant and hyper aware of those things. Maybe almost to a fault because they're like, chill out, mom. Like we're literally just eating our dinner. I'm like, I know. Yeah. Just, just, I like try to take Colt everywhere I can, but then not really. Yeah. Yeah. At least take him with me and just like leave him in the car. I have an electronic car, so I can leave there. There's I don't. what dog mode is what it's called. Yeah. Don't freak out. Don't go around breaking windows. But if you yeah. see a dog, you can. You have my permission yeah. <laughs> to do that. <sighs> and maybe we're too relaxed. <laughs> yeah, it's nice here. I just kept being like, I hated those chairs. The chairs were the worst. They look nice. It just felt really formal. You know what I mean? And I just don't know that I, I think because of the chairs, because we had to like chairs, sit upright. And it, it was just like the way that it was just like set up. The walls were very straight and, and pink and you know, and I just didn't Why? feel- Why, are these walls not straight? <laughs> Is it gonna cave in it, on it, us? It feels more like, I don't know, relaxed. Maybe yeah, just cause I I'm agree. in a much more relaxed state of mind. I don't know, but- The couch helps, I think. I think they definitely, the dog also helps, the fucking plushy pillows, they, <laughs> yeah. they, all of it, all of it helps. And I'm just kind of like, uh, anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, what did we do? What are we doing? I don't even know, just oh, kidding. No. Everything's gonna get super serious. It's it? not. Oh, I was, I was just like, kidding. Oh, fuck. I was like, wait, but I thought we were talking about something not that serious. Oh, but it is kind of serious. Um, but you know, so it was my birthday, but there's like a lot going on for me, like personally and stuff. So, you know, I never f am fully relaxed. So to yeah. have one of the things that I do in my day, which in you know includes the the podcast, come down and be more relaxed, I think is really favorable. And I think I'm gonna try to do that in other areas of my life. I'm not entirely sure how yet, but oh, she's such. A Oh, he's gonna be jealous. I know Huey's gonna be jealous. Should I let Huey in too? I feel guilty, but he's too big. He'll take up too much space. And the grunting. And he's a grunter and a snorter. He can't help it. He has a short nose bone. Yeah. <laughs> oh Did you God. hear? Like in the Netherlands, they like um, put put into law. Like it's it's against the law now to breed dogs that have snouts that are not of a certain length. 
So like pugs and like certain breeds of like bullies and stuff, because of like, I guess so much inbreeding and stuff, their their noses are getting shorter and shorter and it just like caves in and they, they can't breathe and they just like suffer through their lives. And a lot of people are just like, oh, it's so cute. All the grunting and snorting. It's like, no, your dog literally is Suffering. fighting for air and cannot breathe. And so they passed a law in the Netherlands. It's like, it is against the law. And they have like this like, <laughs> they have this like scale, like you put it against the dog's face and it has to be like X, like X amount of <laughs> inches outside of its face. So I took it to the my dog and I was like, okay, you're okay. Huey, you're kind of on the border. Wait, but is it proportionate? Because like, what about tiny dogs? Well, I mean, it has to be like from their face, a certain degree from like the, the top it's of their crazy. head to Good like the them. end of their snout or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's that's really important because, you know, there is a lot of inbreeding with dogs. There's a lot of like issues that they health problems that they have or like, you know, as they evolve and the short like I mean, some dogs, their noses are so short that it looks like it goes into their fucking heads. I'm like, it's yeah. cute in a weird, like tragic kind of way. Like, I know people I really that. love purebred dogs or like, you know, because they like want to have this like ideal looking dog that they want. But mutts really are the healthier dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the hell she is. I don't know, Huey's- She's gorgeous. I know, she's a sweet- Speaking dog. of which though, my cousin, so they adopt, so they fostered this dog. Yeah. They fostered this dog, cause like the kids, they have two kids, I think they're like seven and five-ish, mm -hmm. and they've been like asking for a dog, but you know, um, my cousin's wife, she- Dogs are is, a lot. They're a lot. And you know, and like she likes things kept a certain way, but I think she also wanted a dog too. So they fostered a dog to see how the dogs would feel. That's sweet. And then the dog was just so well behaved, even though I think my cousin wanted a puppy because he wants like a puppy and I'll he never. wants like a bigger dog Puppies that he can play so with and stuff. But then they got this older dog. Was, I think not that old. It was like maybe three years old, but like, you know, grown. And it was so chill. So they were just like, you know, they were like, it's hard to give her back after the fostering because like- I, I will never understand how anyone can foster a dog and then be like, here you go. I would be so attached. It'd be over. It'd Especially be over. people you who like foster now. puppies and kittens. Couldn't I'm do like, it. Yeah. Couldn't do it. You live here. You are my dog. That's yeah. done. And uh, so they like decided they're like, you know what? They're weighing their options. And they're like, if we got a puppy, we would have to do all this training with to spend all this money to get it trained to where this dog already is. destroy your house. Is. Yeah. And that's what the other thing, they were like, this dog doesn't chew anything. She was so chill. She would just like hide under their like breakfast nook bench. No. And then a couple weeks in, um, actually like a month or two in, I think, all of a sudden they were like, uh, we just found out this dog is pregnant. <laughs> actually, no, what happened was oh, they decided- that's why, she was, that's why she was so chill. She was just yeah. tired. They, but, but it actually happened after they decided to officially adopt her. That she got pregnant? Yeah, no, 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 no. Like a week after that is when they found oh, out that she was pregnant. So it was too late. It was too late. Not that I think they were gonna give her back, but they were just like, we don't know what we're gonna do. So luckily the foster agency, they were like, if you don't want to take on the responsibility of adopting out the puppies, they were like, just bring the puppies, just nurse them until they're old enough, and then bring them back, and we'll adopt them out. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Since we have the process and all that stuff, the vetting. So that's what I think they're looking to do. But it was born. The puppies were born two days ago. Oh. We're gonna put up a picture right here, but they're like the tiniest oh. little things ever. And like the mom's already a mutt, so like they don't even know what the dog the dad was, even though my cousin, um, his wife, I, the, I just call both of them my cousins, but she was like, she was like, I think the dad was a pit bull. And I was like, why do you think that? She's like, oh, cause impossible. the baby's heads kind of look pit bullish. I was like, they're one day old. You're just you seeing don't skull cause they know. haven't formed any shape yet. That's yeah. oh, just, just a skull. <laughs> I, I have this theory that she was telling me was a pit bull because she wants me to take one. You know ah, what I mean? she and knows she you knows love I have a soft bulls. spot for yeah. pit bulls. Um, I think that's what her real goal was because <laughs> well, I know you, Tracy. I know. You. I want to thank you for bringing up dogs and fostering dogs. Literally, my husband, because he mentions it to my husband, <laughs> shows him the pictures. He goes. I think we need another dog. And I was like, no. He's no, like, that's not what happened. He was like, Susie, let's get a puppy. Susie's like, yes. I <laughs> I spoke. Wait, wait, no. I think it actually happened I, the I other way. It. Yeah, you told it. You were like, honey. She's like, yo, bo, we need another dog. I He's like, yes. He wouldn't want. <sighs> okay, off the microphone. 
I knew he wouldn't want a puppy because puppies are like so dramatic and they're so hard and it's and also we but have two. But is the juice worth the squeeze? Well, I don't know because we have two huge dogs and I'm like I don't know how it's gonna be with a puppy. You know, it's it's weird. So the all, moment. That puppy scent travels through the air I know. and goes into your nose. You're going to be like, nope, we're keeping I it. I think Jilly would be such a good mama, too. God, I oh, miss that puppy smell mama. so much. Um, when Colt was a puppy, I literally used to just like bury my face in him and just be I, like, I did that with my children, too. <laughs> <laughs> but so all morning, my husband's been showing me pictures from the, the, um, animal shelter that we got our dogs from all morning. He's like, what about this one? And they're just getting progressively getting bigger, bigger and, and bigger. <laughs> he shows me a dog that's mixed with like a great Dane and some other like Saint massive Bernard. something. I was like, this dog's gonna end up being 300 pounds. It's like bringing a buffalo into our already very small house with yeah. our two huge dogs, our growing children. Like, And I, to I be can't. honest with you, even dogs this medium size, yeah. like pit bulls and stuff, like if they have enough energy, they oh might God. as well be a ginormous dog. Dude, I when I get home sometimes, the way that Huey and Jilly like run through the house because they're excited, I'm like, one of these days, one of the dogs is gonna go through the fucking wall. Or just the floor. The floor is <laughs> just gonna give out. <laughs> but they're the best. Go to your local animal shelter if you have room. Yes. Get bring a dog adopt, home. Don't adopt. Shop. Don't ever buy. No, don't ever buy a dog. No. Adopt. Even if you like specific breeds, they probably have them at a shelter. Sure, you might have to look for a month, but if you get a from a breeder, you're gonna have to wait anyway. And also, mutts are the best. They just kind of are just like I don't know. I think they don't they don't come with a lot of other stuff. No. That pure and like have. though, I do love to raise them from puppies because again, that smell. But. There's something about shelter dogs that are slightly grown. They're yeah. they're just programmed different. Literally so because too. like they know what they could lose. You know what no. I mean? And they're like more grateful. And they you know, I don't know if like the the shelters do this, but they give you like the backstory of like what your dog had gone through like before, like the traumatic events oh, of their lives. More. Like oh, Huey, my bulldog, I guess, you know, they found him on the street and he was like flea ridden and emaciated. And I guess he had been owned by somebody else that wanted him to be like a guard dog, but he just doesn't have really like the temperament or something. So he just like turned him out. And then Jilly, they like, she had a bunch of puppies. And then after they had the puppies, they sold the puppies and then just threw her out on the street. It was just like so sad. And I was just like- That is sad, but I guess it's better than continuing to breed her maybe. Yeah. Huh. So that's why she's- Only because she had a- She's had baby. babies. Oh, so every time I see a dog that like looks like her, I'm like, are you my dog's? Oh my god! I do that with Colt all the time. Are you my? Are you my grand dog? Yeah. <laughs> like I think that all are the you Colt's time. Sister, or brother, <laughs> come live with me. I know you have a, I have a home, but you can come to my house too. I, I can't. When you dogs. said that they uh, tell those backstories, I was going to be like, I think they do that because of the internet. But then I thought about it, and I was like, wait, they did that with Dexter with me too. Yeah. They were like. These puppies are all orphaned because yeah. the mom got shot by cops. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll take all of them. Or when. Where do you live? In an, <laughs> in an apartment. I can, you can't. I will take all of I them. You can have my room. <laughs> yeah. Um, or like on the um, website for the, the animal, the dog shelter or whatever that we go to, they'll be like, my name's Brando. I'm great with kids. I'm a 65 pound bull terrier mix. And I tell them they like have like given like a personality and like tell you like the little backstory. Like I really love dogs and I'm really great with new friends and I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you can come to my house. You can come live with me. I'm your new mommy. I'm like, okay, wait, what? I can't have this many dogs, but you know, I think dogs to me, I mean, of any other pets are obviously clearly my favorite. I don't do amphibians. I don't do like no. rodents and hamsters and mm -mm. anything with, Claws. Yeah, rodents aren't amphibians, but yes. I said rodents and, and, uh, <laughs> and I hate both of them. Too. I understand that they're rodents. Different. Rodents are rodents, but amphibians, mm -mm. frogs and oh, lizards. I don't like the texture. Snakes. It's just the. Uh... It freaks me out. Anyway. Yeah. How about you? You don't like them. How was your week, Jillies? It was great. <laughs> I dug a big hole in the backyard because I get anxiety when my mom leaves the house. <laughs> ate a bag of corn chips. Oh, fuckers. And I don't know who's doing it. She's gaining weight, though, while Huey's losing it. So I think my, I, th I think that maybe Huey gets it off the counter, and then she's like, thank you, I'll take that. Well, it, if she's gaining weight, it's not because of the treats. Because the three times I've seen you give treats, Huey stole all of them from Chili. 
So it's not that. She's definitely the one eating the snacks. I know, because she's a chunky. Huey's Hugh, lost so much Hugh's weight. He's lost weight, yeah. I don't know. Even while eating her treats. Oh. Well, you know, fair is fair. I get it. Anyway. Um, yeah, but because right. of your birthday, you haven't really been able to make too much content, right? I haven't been making a lot of content. I haven't really felt like it either. I don't think, I'm not going to say like my birthday has sent me into a de depressive state, but I've just been kind of like, it, it, it ebbs and flows. You know what I mean? Like with anything, there's some weeks where I'm like, I have so much to say. I have so much I want to do. There's so many things I want to talk about. And then there's some weeks where like, I'm going to just not, and I'm going to just kind of unplug a little bit and just back off. Cause you know, I don't think any, I don't think too much of anything is good for any of us. So yeah. I haven't really been doing tons of content, but this week I have a lot to talk about. And this week in particular, because I've seen a lot of content with people who do this one type of content that I really, really fucking hate. And I think your, I think your video actually, did I offend you? <laughs> um, your latest video really like reinvigorated that in me and like not to say that like I make videos just because about things that I hate but this is something that I just think is such an epidemic in content creation and I fucking can't stand it and I'm talking about like people who like rage bait and like public nuisance content creation and I've, I've talked about this before like people who like deliberately go out into public spaces just to make people either offended or uncomfortable or like traumatize them like it's just like so fucking like it's such a like low bar on how to create content yeah. I mean why don't you give us a little the bit people of who like especially abuse that like first amendment you yeah. know what I mean they're I like I can say what I want sure I'm you in can. public you can but you might also get shot you might and then that person <clears throat> won't get in trouble for right it. exactly and there are you know videos going around about how people are just kind of starting to get sick of it too and like kind of retaliating against people who who do shit like that but there was a video that you posted, yep. but this was something that you witnessed firsthand. Yeah, so I, like I said earlier, I went to the Korean festival, um, not thinking anything like this was gonna happen. First of all, the parking was insane. We drove around yeah. for like 30 minutes just for parking alone. That's why I don't go places. The parking alone gives yeah. me so much fucking anxiety. Mm -hmm. I almost was like, do I go to Galleria, buy a stick of gum and just park my car there? Yeah, and, and then, then Uber or whatever, yeah. yeah. But either way, we were there and we're like standing in line, um, about to order food and I see this guy in an electric wheelchair and he's wearing a Kim Jong-un mask and he's holding this like fake dynamite. He has like North Korean flag on his wheelchair. He does? Yeah. And he's like going up to people, anybody who makes eye contact with him, even in passing, he goes up to them and he just instigates. He says things like, I don't understand what I did that was so bad. I'm not a bad person. Like, you know, things like that. And it was like infuriating because he was clearly there to get reactions from people. And I was trying to think of a way, like it enraged me almost immediately, but then I like talked myself down. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, let's like not overreact, whatever, whatever. But. I don't think anything you could have said or done would have been an overreaction to somebody doing something like that. But 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 I meant like overreact as in like, because they he had like three or four people with him and one person literally had like a gimbal with like his phone on it and was like filming and everything. And there was like two other people who were like, you know, taking like other shots. So then he's clearly like an established content creator. So I'm not sure, or like trying to be, I'm not sure yet. You yeah. know what I mean? Either way, well, he's gonna he have has some a plan. This probably isn't his, this isn't his first video. Yeah. So either way, I, I'm trying to figure out what to do because like, I don't want to give him the content that right. he wants to, to even be able to twist, you know what I mean? Cause I also made that one video about all those first amendment frauditors, you know, the people who like pretend like they're first amendment auditors, which first amendment auditors are people who like say, hold police is. accountable. Uh, they hold police and government officials accountable by, by exercising the first amendment rights to film in public, you know, the right to media and by making sure that like, you know, they're not doing anything shady or like, you know, you said this one time, so like now you're saying the opposite, like they do that kind of stuff. But there are frauditors who take advantage of it to of get reactions from people. Like that one video that I made, we're targeting a lot of people in Koreatown and they would like go up to people eating and then literally say things like, what, are you getting uncomfortable? What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? God, why, why is that a thing? God, that's so And then so like if anybody even says anything to them, they'll like use that as a screenshot and they're always called a Karen or a Chad. And you're like, bro, you're the Chad. Yeah, you just shove the, the fucking, fucking camera on my face. I'm trying to just eat a fucking bowl of ramen and you're trying to like instigate a fight with me. Like, yeah. what do you, like, 
What do you want to, to and they're happen? They're like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? This is legal. They're like, you can't film me. They're like, yes, I can. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna film you. What are you gonna do something about it? What are you gonna do something? And you're like, nope. I want to so bad. So bad. Like, I don't know that yeah. if I was confronted with that, that I would have the personal self-control to not. Like, yeah. I feel like I would go off. And then, but then, of course, I know that that's exactly what they want me to do, right? That's yeah. that's what, ugh. That First Amendment fraud editor video I, I showed, I showed this one guy who then goes up. He's like, he's Hispanic. He's Latino. He goes up to this Latina woman who's a street vendor. She's like selling food and he's just filming her. And at one point she's like, kind of like, you know, she's like being lighthearted about it and kind of like fucking with him back being like, oh, okay, you know, in, 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 in Spanish. And at one point she like kind of just taps him to be like, okay, you know what I mean? And he calls the cops over it and gets her arrested. Oh my God. She has, and like, and then he films her like having to shut down her stand. So like you ruined somebody's life for a fucking, con like for content, like God. Long story, I think Ugh. that happened like a year ago. I think she sued him Good. and won. Good, fuck that guy. But yeah, that guy then got like, tried to get canceled and then he went live and he was like, I don't understand why I'm getting all this hate. And you're like, what, what do you do mean? You mean? You think that you wanting to make content to make money justifies the fact that like you just fucked up someone else's day of making money. Not only did she not get to sell her food that day or whatever, but it, I'm pretty sure it was food. Like whatever she had prepared that day probably also got wasted. Yeah, and also she just got fucking traumatized because she just got fucking arrested by yeah. the police. And then having to possibly take off more days to, to go to court. Go to court. And, like, and now she has to file a lawsuit against you, which is also incredibly right. traumatizing and time consuming and expensive and like. So knowing that I didn't want to give this guy the content that he wanted, but I like couldn't stop myself. And like, I was about to, I like my phone out. It was on can, it was like- It would have been such a weird like inception kind of thing for me to see a video that somebody else took of you taking a video of yeah. that guy getting in a fight with it. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, I don't know which side of the mirror I'm on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was even like trying to think of what I could say to him and how things could be twisted. And as I'm about to walk, Ron was with me and he goes, he goes, don't do it. He's like, they just want a reaction. I was like, God damn it, fuck you, Ron. Where's like, that rebar now, Ron? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are we going to do? So then as I'm thinking that, I see this like, this guy, this like dude who's like walking like this, you know, with his like, he's like, my arms are so big, they won't <laughs> my stay on my size. My so big, bro, I can't even put my arms down. Yeah. Like one of those guys. And he literally was walking <laughs> with his arms out this far and I was like about to laugh and then I saw security on his back and uh. then saw another guy next to him and I was like, oh, I was like, I think they're beelining it to that guy. And Ron was like, I don't know. What would they even go up to him for? And then they did, they talked to him and because they wanted to see who they were talking to, they made him take off his mask. And I was recording this whole time, I was like, Thank you for making yeah. him take off his mask. Because up until that point, I think he was wearing the mask the whole time. So like people didn't even know who to be mad at. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I got his face. Luckily I'd gotten my new phone because it, it zoomed in like crazy because my old phone, once I got to one and a half, I think the um, stabilizer was fucked up. So it just like the camera shook uh, like this. So I wouldn't have been able to get stable footage. Oh, good. Thankfully I had a new phone. So I was able to get clear footage of him. And then I, uh, they talked to him for a while. And even though I saw the security guards laughing here and there, I just kind of was like, you know what? I'm sure they're not trying to like also not give him the content that right. he wants by right. being like whatever. So Especially I was like, if it's like law enforcement security yep. type people. Especially because they were like that whole time their guys were just like right. standing there filming it. So I filmed it and then I was like, I, I'm sure they're going to get kicked down. Yeah, so I was like, they're probably gonna get kicked out. So then I decided to just like be like, you know what, out of sight, out of mind. I have the footage. I have what I need to make the video later. You know, get them identified, whatever. So then we go about our day. We start ordering more food, eating from all the vendors, because like that was mainly the reason I was there to eat, support Korean vendors. Right. You know, be like, enjoy Whoa, your day. Yeah. Korean festival. I've never been to anything like this. You know right. what I mean? So um, we decided to go eat. We ordered the tornado. Uh, potatoes. Oh, I love those. Yeah, potatoes. I love those. We got honey. God, we got um, garlic butter. It was Dude, so good. I would go to that for that. Those yeah. things are the best. Mm -hmm. That's genius invention. But like a whole as, potato yeah. in a chip. 
but not a chip. Yeah, kind it's not as fry. crunchy, but it's like a fry, but it's like oh, a chip. So good. And then it's like powdery. So smart. It's so God, smart. I'm so sorry, continue. So I'm we're starving, like in li- Yeah, <laughs> we're like, it is lunchtime. Yeah. We were in line to order that. And then I look behind me, I'm just, you know, looking around and lo and behold, far away from me, I see that guy again, except he's wearing his mask. And then I slow, start to notice that this time there are cops walking towards oh, me. Oh, like actual cops. Actual police officers. So I was like, uh-oh. And then they were all talking to him and I was like, are they chatting with him? What's going on? And then I think I pieced it together that the actual cops came because the fact that he's holding this fake dynamite. Yeah, that's like a terror threat. Yeah, and I think that's enough for cops to at least get involved. Of even course. though, so like I went live at that point because I was like, well, I'm gonna see what happens now. Well, like you can't brandish like a fake gun. Why right. should you be able to brandish fake dynamite? Exactly. Like, especially where there are people congregated. Exactly. In a public space where there's lots of people. And that should be against the law. And it's not Halloween yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just went live. So I'm filming them. And the live lasted for about 15 minutes. I'm standing there filming them. And at that point, we ordered our potato, tornado potato, whatever they're called, hurricane potatoes. And they were like, oh, sorry, it's going to be like a 20, 25 minute wait. Take, and I was like, you know what? Take your time. <laughs> take your time. I was like, I, I have something to do over here. So I'm doing the live. And I don't think the cops could do anything technically. You know what I mean? Once they find out that it's a fake dynamite i don't think they you they can't really do anything right. you know but and i was standing there thinking i was like even though we're in a public space this is a permitted event which makes it seem like it's like a private event semi-private kind of, or you know, something, even yeah. though it's open to the public and it should be something that i thought that they would be able to kick him out of you know what mm-hmm. i mean so i'm filming them they aren't done yet the cops are still talking with them and at one point about 15 minutes in they start getting insecure that i'm filming them the guy, the the his like little crew. Yeah, they like they like the guy in the oh, like wheelchair. The yeah, the King Jong Un guy. He notices this first, and he says it to his main camera guy. And I think the other two people are there to get like additional footage and mostly just like to be the entourage yeah. in case something happens or whatever, you know. And um, so they start getting insecure, and then he starts saying things like. Oh, did you get all the footage you need? Well, did you? Did you like you know what I mean? Like being like, oh, do you need more footage? And then you start like acting out and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's the weirdest thing. I was like, you guys literally came here looking for attention, but now that you're getting attention that's out of your control of narrative, I was like, now you're getting insecure. I was like, what a weird thing. Right. I was like, but you don't think the rest of us feel like that while you're making like slightly like terroristic th- again, not in reality, but like. No, You're trying to bring that, trauma. I don't to people. think it's as slight as as he may or even other people listening might yeah. think it is. You are basically the embodiment of what a lot of these people have literally like suffered and lived through right. this traumatic event yep. that people are still now f- currently feeling. Be- people in that crowd, I guarantee you, have had family members separated from them that they never saw again. From yeah. like 1940 something. And like when I was a kid, I used to get really mad when people used to be like, well, are you from North or South Korea? And I used to literally in my ignorance be like, you can't leave North Korea. So right. every Korean person you see is South Korean. I grew up and I realized I met people who have family from North Korea sure. or you know what I mean? So it's like, there are people, there were people there for sure. 100%. Who it wasn't just like, I'm Korean, that's Korean, that's fucked up. It was like, um, his family literally killed my family. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Right. You know I, mean, I mean, and and it really wasn't. And like when I was like trying to figure out how mad I was going to be, it wasn't until I started noticing the elderly Korean people around me. Right. And you could see them get visibly upset and having conversations with their family being like, that's messed up. You know what I mean? And right. seeing them get traumatized. That's when I was like, oh, no. Also, fuck the difference is, is this is not just a historic event that happened in the past. It is still now. Yeah. It is still current. There are still currently families that are separated by the North Korean border, you know, or, you know, by the, the DMZ that, that they cannot cross, that they cannot see. Like, this is actively still happening. This is not like something that happened in the past that that has, you know, whatever. This is right now also. And to, to think that you would go into a public space to deliberately hurt and traumatize people for fun, to think that it's funny, to me is like, it's so outrageous. And it's like, why can't you think of anything better? And like, why is this the thing that you think is gonna what, catapult you into fame? Like you wanna be famous, you wanna be infamous for this? Why? 
yeah. hurting people is is like fun for you and funny for you. Well, that's the thing is, is like that fucking guy. Who is he? It's like this like fast track to virility sometimes because it's like so outrageous. You know what I mean? And I think that's I think it says a lot about the people because it's like that's the best. You, that's that's all that's in your arsenal. You that's. Well, right, and the slippery slope, the danger of that is, like, if it does go viral and he gets, you know, what's yeah, next? Right. Who's next? It's It would be like, I don't know if we even need an analogy, you know? Um, I don't, you know what, here's the thing. We could draw different comparisons, but I don't want to traumatize other people by even saying, like, would you do this, would you do that? Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, you do not go to a place dressed up like the person that has caused devastation and harm and murder and dress up like that person in front of the people who have suffered through it. You just don't fucking do that. And I just feel like if you can't be creative enough to not go into public spaces, and this is like, I think this is not, it's not just that instance. Like there's so many, I've done a few videos because I'm starting to see it more and more and the offenses become more and more egregious that I'm just like, what, I, okay, like I went to a steak restaurant the other night, right? And I wanted to film my meal cause it was amazing. But I was like, oh God, I kind of don't want to turn on my light. There's other people eating dinner. I didn't want to turn on a light cause I thought it would alienate and, and upset other people, let alone like, so I was just like, okay, I'll just film it in the dark and see how it goes and you know, whatever. But there are people who, and, and like, I, I was like, oh, I feel weird, I'm gonna just not. It, while other people are going to public spaces to deliberately do that and like be a nuisance yeah. to others. Like let people live their lives. Like you don't have to do that. And if you do, then then maybe you're not as creative as you think you are. And maybe you don't deserve the platform you think you do. Yeah. Jumani's right. And like, if you think that stuff is funny, it's not. I think it says a lot about. Society. Yeah. It says about, a lot about society. It says a lot about what people want to do. Like. Like there was this video of, um, but the, the, the downside of that is, is that like, it's going to desensitize people sure. to fucked up shit. Right. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Um, which means that people are just going to do more fucked up shit and then fucked up shit now is just going to be normal. And like, that's not a fucking society that right. I want to live in. I agree. I totally agree. And like, you know, I think we're seeing people who are starting to also kind of get I don't want to say sick of it, but just, or just like, don't also like the I'm thing is, yeah. A lot of people don't know that it's happening when they're in those spaces. Like they don't know that they're being filmed. They don't know that, you know, this crazy reaction is what people want. Or like, you know, people are like filming while other people are like harassing. Like, did you hear about the guy? He was like a food delivery guy and some YouTuber, I guess, was filming him, but he didn't know. Cause the, the guy who was filming was like off somewhere else. And he like takes his phone and he's playing this like, message over and over. He's like, who is this? Who, and he's just like, keeps shoving his phone in this guy's face. And the guy's like, dude, like leave me alone. He's like backing away. He's like, I don't wanna be part of this. Like, leave me alone. I don't know you. And it's this guy who's like six, five or something. So this is like this huge, like domineering dude. And his like little friend is with him. And the guy's like, leave me alone. And he's like, just trying to fucking do his door dash and go. And the guy continues to do it and he starts following him. And the guy, the, the DoorDash guy, pulls out a gun and shoots him in the fucking stomach. And I was just like, not happy, obviously, that the guy got shot, but I was just like, what were you expecting to happen? Yeah. What are you, like, eventually it's gonna catch up with you. Eventually people are gonna be like, I've had enough of this. I don't wanna participate in this. You're making me feel scared. I feel threatened. I'm going to exercise my, you know, my rights and I'm gonna shoot. And then they, they went to court. Not guilty. Not guilty by reason of self-defense. Yep. Like, I think he got, I think he might, but even still though, I think he has to go to jail now for shooting inside a mall, which Yo, you're yeah, not allowed that, to do. He did, he was, he, he was found not guilty for shooting that guy, but he still did get charged for brandishing a weapon. Yes. Yeah. So like now he has to serve time for that. Like, and it's like, this situation should have never happened. Right. That guy shouldn't be going to jail because he felt threatened by you because you put him in that position. Like it's it's really fucked up and it's really annoying. Or just like, also, I just find them annoying. I find those kinds of types of like creators like just annoying. And I'm sure people find me annoying. I, I know they do. Actually. Yeah, yeah. But Which like, but like, it's I don't even know what it is because it's like the pe they wouldn't even have a platform if people weren't entertaining it. Well, so I guess it's kind of like the question of like prostitution, right? People are like, 
you can't be a prostitute. It's like, well, you wouldn't need prostitutes if people weren't paying prostitutes. You know, so it's like that kind of thing. Like, you know, what was it? Supply and demand, right? If there was no demand, there would be no supply. So that's true too. People there's love just, it. There's just Think a, about it. Millions and millions of people watch these videos and like them and share them and, you know, there's just them. like a lot of sub mid people like below mid. And I'm trying to like use very nice words here, but like, Sub mid people are going to find sub mid things funny. I'm just going to say it. Stupid people are going to find stupid things funny. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on. I just got a really weird. Like I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> what? Your mom's text. I'm oh. a whore. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> it wasn't from my mom. So I like out of context, I was like, Nobody would text me that. Are you saying I, they're a whore or yeah. I'm a whore? The last time this happened, it was because your mom texted you, I'm a whore. And you're like, I just got a weird text. Right, right, right. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Um, oh, I keep losing my train of thought. I think it's the, the hotness. I'm hot again. The, hot, the, the gun guy. Oh, yeah. But we have like a bunch of videos, right? Oh, yeah. Watch this one. Do you have it? Mm -hmm. The Johnny. Do you guys know who Johnny Somali is? I've talked about him a couple of times. This one. Yeah. Johnny Somali, known for pushing the boundaries of live streaming, incited local offense with his unsolicited racist comments during his travels in Japan. Among his controversial actions, Johnny Somali disrespectfully invoked the tragic historical events of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on public transport. Like talking about Hiroshima and whatever, it's like, like that's such like content. The locals' tolerance eventually wore thin, leading to a physical confrontation with an aggrieved I got citizen. Camera. Let's be respectful. You know what I mean? If I go back and- oh, right, right. So, so this guy, Johnny Somali, just goes around Japan saying things like invoking, you know, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. He was talking about uh, the Fukushima, I think, nuclear plant. He just, he just goes around antagonizing people and like deliberately upsetting them. So then like the Japanese Yakuza found him and they like basically threatened him and they're like, you know, you, you want to keep fucking around, you know, you're going to fucking that's find all out. We did. Then while he's in Japan, he gets arrested for trespassing. Um, I guess he went onto some like construction site, which I guess you're not allowed to do. So they arrest him. And in Japan, I think they can detain you for 23 days. So they held him for 23 days. God knows what was going on with him. I think they probably interrogated the shit out of him. They probably used some kind of like, I don't know, I don't want to say torture, but like, I doubt it. Well, no, like sleep deprivation and like constant oh, interrogation really? and they things like that. that. I mean, I don't know what goes on in prisons overseas, but I'm, you know, I'm sure <laughs> shit that goes on. They probably well, just like left him alone. Well, even if he's Isolation, just in you know? jail, yeah. like whatever. It sucks. So then they let him out. And on the day he like literally steps out of the jail, they arrest him again immediately for causing a disturbance in a restaurant. So they're just waiting it out. They're just re-arresting him for shit that he's already done. And what they're speculating is that they are detaining him in an effort to make it so that his visa runs out. I think he's probably like a 90 day visa. And then after that, if he overstays his visa, then they can arrest him for that. And then they can deport him and then they can make it so that he never is able to enter the country again. So basically they make it so that he's banned from Japan and he can never come back is, is what people are speculating Thank they're doing. God. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know like, if we, imagine, want, we want him back. <laughs> I don't. Imagine being so smart that you decide to go to a country and try to antagonize every single person there. Right. You have no awareness for your own safety. Yeah, like you're jeopardizing your own safety so that you can what, like scream Nagasaki on a train? Like that's crazy to me. Well, and like, I don't know, like who is that to entertain? I'm guessing what, 14, 15 year old boys? Like, do they find that funny? Like I, I know my, my nephew is 15 and he thinks it's stupid and he hates it. You know, so I, I don't know. It's I don't know not, who it's for. It's, it's for other incels. It's for sub subhumans, subhumans. How's that? How's Thanks. that tasting, Julie? Thanks, Julie. It's salty. <laughs> it's just really. I don't even know. I don't even have the words. I hate them. I hate them too. Who else are we talking about? Yeah, I honestly hate Johnny Somali so much. I hope he just disappears. And I don't mean that in a weird way. I just mean like, I hope he doesn't have a platform anymore. And well, who was like the original guy? One of the Paul brothers, Jake, Aaron. Yep. No, no, I always say Aaron. Aaron is the guy from Breaking Bad, isn't he? Yeah, it <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> Jake and. 
Logan, Logan. Paul. Logan, like it was Logan. Yeah, weren't they the ones who did that? And didn't, didn't he go to like some like Japanese like? Yeah, so he did a couple of things. He would like he he first did this thing where he like dressed up in Pokemon onesies, and then he would throw Pokeballs at Japanese people, and like at their cars and stuff. Like what the fuck? Yeah. So like that was I feel like the infancy stages of some of this like yeah. you know, and then he went to this forest that is known it's literally called the suicide forest because like suicide rates in east asia are really high japan and korea being one of the tops mm -hmm. and there's this one particular forest where i guess a lot of people go to unalive themselves because you can say suicide it's our podcast oh yeah a lot of people go there to you know to to take their own lives because i think it's just like this secluded place i think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that like if they off themselves there they hang themselves from a tree there. There's less of a likelihood that like one of their family members will find them and they'll traumatize them. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a very sad thing, but I think they do it in that forest for very thoughtful reasons. Right, right. You know? The most respectful way you could. Right. Right. So yeah. like even in that sadness, there is some respect that goes into it. And then oh, Logan so Paul went there and then film came across, I think a dead body and then filmed it put it in his YouTube video and then fucking uploaded it. Oh my God. And they were like, yeah, they, at first they're like, oh my God, is that a body? Is that a dead body? And then they were like laughing about it. That's disgusting. And that guy still has a career? Not only does he have a career, it's exploded. Well, so then we know. So then I think it's pretty obvious what the desire is for people to do that is because we keep making stupid people famous. Let's just fucking say it. That's what it is. Stupid people getting famous for being stupid and for being public nuisances and for hurting other people and for not giving a fuck about society. That's what's happening. Yeah. I think the heat is making me very we made, upset. We made, a, <laughs> we made a hoodie once, Ron and I are you kicks. Um, we worked with an artist and the hoodie literally says, stop making stupid people famous. Yeah. I mean, look at like reality, sh reality TV and stuff, you know? Like there's a new show coming out. I, this is maybe completely unrelated, but it's like, what is it like reality villains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I them, talked like, about it last live week. In a house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, that's right. And I, I finally saw some like clips of it. I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Why are these people famous? Like it's yeah. so crazy. Like who's gonna watch that? Is you're part of the problem? I am part of the problem, Edward. You're. I am watching it though because I am a big fan of Tanisha. Who? She was on like one of the first seasons of Bad Girls Club. Oh, is she the nobody sleep in the house? Yes, <laughs> yes. For a whole year, that was my alarm. You're not getting any sleep because of me? Yep. Like the cake yep. pans and shit? For a whole year, that was my alarm sound. I used to wake up to that because it was hilarious. You're I used to wake up laughing. I love so her funny. so much. She's hilarious. Well, because she was like the first season of Bad Girls She Club, wasn't right? even that much of a villain. Yeah. She just was like very vocal. She just didn't take shit. She just like didn't take shit, but she somehow got, you know, casted as a villain because- Probably because she's a woman of color. But wasn't everybody on that show a villain? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was called Bad Girls Club. Yeah, I mean, didn't the they just like drink and fight. So it was a <laughs> show where they just got a bunch of problematic girls with like drinking problems and anger problems together. Yeah, that's a beautiful To like make fun of them. And it wasn't until like the fourth or fifth season that they were like, we're going to bring in therapists and anger management coaches. And you're like, oh, you guys got backlash for being like yeah but we're pointless. still gonna exploit the fuck out they of do, you and because they literally just provide them with like thousands of dollars worth of alcohol <laughs> and they're just like like all the reality shows i'm pretty sure like they don't give you as much food they yeah. like maybe don't force alcohol down your throats but there's just free alcohol lying around everywhere yeah. like, and there's you have no access to tvs or internet what else is there to do but just get drunk Drink. and fight yes that sounds kind of fun though but like <laughs> But like Tanisha was so funny. So if you haven't seen Bad Girls Club, <laughs> sorry, I just... if you haven't seen Bad Girls Club, um, it's like the second season. There's like this one episode where have all... you watched all the seasons in? Oh no! <laughs> it was like my guilty pleasure. I love trashy TV so much. You do? Yeah, I guess you do. Huh? I try not to do stuff where like they're problematic to other people, but like they they don't really hurt anyone else other than themselves. So it's just like a guilty pleasure. I don't know. I saw one girl get like really fucked up. Like she oh like yeah, yeah 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 no. I mean up. like they fuck each other up, but they're uh, like okay. all like, not outside in society. Yeah, they're like okay. all problematic. So it's like whatever. You know what I yeah. mean?
that sounds a little insensitive, but you know, uh, <laughs> you get what you paid for. You yeah. signed up for that shit. So there's this one episode where Tanisha's like, she stayed in while all the, all the rest of the girls, like half the house went out. They come back and they're like being rowdy and all drunk. And so the next, so that morning she, she gets all mad. So that next morning when they're all hung over and trying to sleep in, she wakes up, she takes sheet pans and like a pan and she starts banging it together, literally running around the house going, I didn't get no sleep because of y'all. Y'all get no sleep because of me. And she's like, wah, 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 wah. Can we play she's the just, clip right now, please? Play yeah. it. Here we go. It's literally like the funniest thing I've ever seen. I literally like isolated that sound and turned it into like my alarm sound. And That's like I woke insane. up to it for a year. Yeah, it was like the funniest thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, those shows are just, but I feel like even those guilty pleasure shows are slightly different than all of these like rage. Based. Okay. Because here's the thing too, is like when you're on a television show, there are obviously producers that will exploit pretty much anything that's, that's granted, but at least there are like safety precautions. There are, you know, some protocols. And consent. Yeah. And protocols in place and consent. Exactly. Everybody who's participating is willingly participating. Yes. Even versus. though they might not have consented to some of the things that happened, they consented to being on the show and the parameters of which they're on the show. Right, right. But yeah, I mean, I just feel like, if, is this just kind of the, the trajectory of society where just things are just getting, I don't know, more and more just ignorant and useless. And it's just like, and it's like, why, why is that our entertainment, right? It's, so I, I think, again, it's just this like voyeuristic thing where people just like watching people, in situations, but it's like becoming more and more uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure this is somehow a Kardashian's fault. <laughs> oh, it definitely is. Yeah, exactly. They definitely pushed the Contributed whole reality to, TV. Yeah. I'm not a fan of reality TV. I like cooking shows, but that's different. I love certain reality TV. I refuse to watch the Kardashians. But I've, I've literally never seen an episode of a Housewives and I've never seen an episode oh, of nope. a Kardashian mm, ever. And I have those. no interest. I don't even know what a Vanderpump is. Oh, not that one either. What is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch, I watch like- Like that's a flex to me that I've never seen any of those shows. I watch like nine, 90 Day Fiance. Oh, Edward. I watch all of them. Eduardo. Like the other way, before, after. Oh God. I used to watch Say Yes to the Dress. That's different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that. Um, but, you know, I mean, fine. If, if people like it and that's, that, you know, I also don't want to like, I don't want people to not have fun. But the problem is, is like when these things are what people like watching, it just breeds worse versions of them, I'll say. Look, I'm perfectly okay with comedy and even some of the stuff that they do, as long as there's consent. Right. If you're right. laughing at the detriment of someone, it's not funny. That's just evil. Right. I agree. You know what I mean? That's like bully. That's like when people are like, oh, it's just a joke. To you, right. to me, it wasn't. To because me, you didn't, number one, didn't even know it was a joke. Didn't right. even know you were participating. And so now I'm I'm supposed to laugh at a joke I didn't know I was part of and I'm the butt of it. No, no, thank you. I feel like a lot of people lack empathy and critical thinking beyond the now. I agree. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, for instance, that Korea festival thing, um, people literally, even in my video, were like, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was funny. Cool. You think it's funny because you stop there. Right. You're not listening to the part where I said that there were literally elderly people there who, you know what I mean, who were clearly traumatized. What if we don't know about the fact that one of them went home, got so depressed about the fact that they lost their family in the Korean War, and then killed themselves? Is that funny? Is that funny right. to you? It's not funny to me. Right. I mean, and but can... that's the thing about trauma is that you don't know how it affects people. Even if it's not today, they could go into a depression for the next month. And, and here's the thing. And the thing is, is like, we can always paint these things with like, you know, hypothetical scenarios. Like what if this person did that because of that? And, and, and that begets a whole different conversation because then again, that conversation then talks about like, can we not do comedy at all? Cause you can say that about anything. So there, there's a slippery slope with that. A little bit, the but like, is, if you think about comedy shows though, like even when they get made fun of, like you came to no, a comedy show. My issue is this, doing those kinds of pranks and doing those kinds of gags and whatever, what happens is, is the whole empathy factor is removed from that. Yeah. And people, like you said, don't stick around to find out, you know, what happened. But I think when people watch it, they, they, they're so removed from like what the reality of that is for others. That's where it becomes an issue. And because people 
sensationalize it and they make it seem like it's such a funny, fun thing, then you start to kind of dehumanize and that's the dehumanization of those people. And then that begets this kind of apathy. And that's what then becomes what we're seeing now. It's the lack of empathy that starts with like, oh, it's okay. It's just a joke. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like all of those things. But then again, where's the line? Where's the line? How do we draw that line? And it's, it's, it's a tough thing to to navigate and to negotiate. I don't know. I don't know because, you know, people say in my videos all the time, well, it's just a joke. It's just funny or whatever. And like, yes, I understand that. And then, you know, that scenario that you just gave could potentially come up, but it's like, but I don't, but then do we not have comedy? Do we not have reality shows? Do no, we I not, think you, know? you can, but it's just like, you just, you can just be like thoughtful of other oh. people's experiences. But that's what I'm saying is like people's idea of what thoughtfulness varies so much because we have become so apathetic that now there is, the meter is so skewed and that is becoming the real issue. Is that- like, what I think of is, is that like, I used to love your mama jokes. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to middle school, we literally used to have your mama battles in lunchroom. You sure. know what I mean? So like it, it, it was a norm for me. It was something that like, and I did, I used to win all the time. You know what I mean? So like for me, it was like. That doesn't surprise me. I have a sharp tongue. Um, <laughs> so like I used to win your mama jokes all the time. You know what I mean? I used to just be able to make them up on the fly. And it, it was like when I was like 21 or 22, you know, when people used to say something, it's like your mom, you know what I mean? Like people used to be like, oh, this is cold. It's like your mom's cold. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that whole, th you know, it's just, it just sounds ridiculous, you know, because none of it makes sense. Right. You know, that was like the joke until one day my friend's mother passed away. Uh. And it was so ingrained in me. That no, you didn't. Without thinking, not on the day, but like a month or two later, he said something and I was like, you're. Oh. And I stopped right there and I literally was like, that ends I am that. so sorry. Yeah. I was like, you know, I didn't, I was like, I didn't mean it. I was like, I, I was like, it's just so ingrained in me. And then so from there on, I just was like, you know what? I don't know who, whose mothers are alive, you know, especially at this age when I was right. a kid, maybe less of a risk, you right. know? So I just, now I, I don't say your mom. Well, and maybe that's, that's the, maybe you would just kind of hit the nail on the head is it's the reflexiveness of those kinds of things. Like those apathetic or, you know, unintentionally though they may be, you know, really like hurtful comments and things like that is like a reflex now. Like people just reflexively just like do those things, make those videos, say those, say that, you know, really unnerving content, make those jokes or whatever. And it's just like a reflex and people think it's so funny. And it's like, yeah you don't, you don't know who you're saying it to and you yeah. don't know what somebody else has experienced, you know? And I think of those scenarios because like those have happened to me. If people have said stuff that have put those ideations in my head where sure. I was like, fuck that, that fuck yeah. you then. You know what I mean? Right. Or even like made me so upset that I was like, you know what? I'll show you how much you don't care. Let's see what happens if this happened. You know what I mean? Right. I'm like, so I use those thoughts to stop myself from yeah. doing it. Good. Well, and I feel like it's not that hard. Maybe if people thought a little bit more, we wouldn't, you know, but I feel like for a lot of those things, like there has to be consequences for people to be like, oh, I didn't realize that could have happened. Oh, yeah. You know? And that's the sad part. I agree. I agree. A little bit of thought. I've, I've been thinking about making this video for a couple of weeks now where it was like when people say marriage is hard, when people say work is hard, I don't think people realize that the hard work that many people talk about is working to care. Mm empathy side of it you know what i mean the caring part takes work you know I, what i mean i like, talk to my husband about this all the time like all the time you, you have to put in the work to care about that person's feelings you have to put in the work to care to listen and try to understand what they're saying and their point like you have the caring it's a lot of work yeah but the without the caring you're just a piece of shit <laughs> we can talk about that next week <laughs> I was supposed to be relaxed, but now I'm not relaxed. Now I'm like on edge <laughs> and I'm pissed off. It's because Jilly is gone. And let's get them back for the out, the exit. Let's get Huey in there too. Hold on. My other dog has decided to make a cameo for our um, outro. You say hi, Huey. Say hi, hi everybody. Balls. And then say balls. Say bye. Say balls. Thank you for joining us on this episode. I hope you guys like the new digs. I think this is going to be permanent because... I don't know. I like a couch and I like having my dogs around. Yeah. And we already bought that plant. So we're like invested at this <laughs> yeah. point. I mean, look at the macrame. <laughs> it stays. <laughs>
I didn't know what a macrame was. And he sure didn't. Susie was trying to explain to me what it was. And, and I, was I did like, a very poor job of explaining. He's like, a what? And I was like, it's like a thing. And it like hangs and it's got like the, the tassels. He's like, I don't fucking have any idea what you're talking about. But we got one and I think it looks great. It does Hi look boy. great. Are you having a nice day? You're the star oh, of the show now, this Hughes. Is my babe. This is my baby boy. This is, oh, sweet. I mean, come on. This is the best. Nobody has a better podcast now. We win. Best podcast ever. Because I got the cutest dogs. This is my good boy. Um, but thank you for joining us on this episode. We yep. hope you enjoyed the new scenery. We hope you like the macrame, the dogs, the pills. This is a great setup. I love it. I do love it. Um, please make sure. We, so we're, we want to have another, now that we have this new setup, we want to be able to do more stuff. Maybe some like cooking episodes. Cooking episodes, eating episodes. Maybe we could have a couple drinks. Maybe yeah. we could have a couple Something else. <laughs> she said dogs. Dogs. <laughs> some drugs. <laughs> but uh, we definitely have a upcoming food episode, couple food episodes um, planned. Yeah. One of which we want to have another listener cultural food write in. Yes. So if you have, we got a couple, but we need a lot more. Yes. I want to try like your favorite like childhood memory foods. Yeah. Like that to me, even if it's like not necessarily like, Cultural, uh, it's, it would be great if it Preferably was. Probably cultural, but, but, but if it was a great story behind it. Yeah, we yeah. would love it. We would love it. So make sure to write those in. You and guys, it doesn't please. have to be Asian. We do love Asian, but yes. it doesn't have to be. Yeah. So please, you know, if you have any fun stories, experiences, just foods you love and want to share, please write us um, with your story. Make sure you include the food. If there's any instructions on how you ate it or specifics, whatever it is, just put them all in there, including your name or if you don't want to be named. Right. Either way, write it into what in the shibal at gmail.com. That's S-H-I-B-A-L at gmail.com with a what in the in front of the shibal. You, right. you get it. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> thank you. Make sure you follow us on our socials. Oh, and make sure you join our Patreon. Um, oh, right. Um, also, uh, <laughs> she's going crazy with the mic. Also, please make sure we did set up a Patreon. Um, if you do want to become a producer of the show, uh, please help us to keep this sustainable. If you have gotten any joy or. And maybe we could use some of the money to buy my dog's dog toys because they're such good children. Yeah. <laughs> and by dogs, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I need food, economy. food and stuff too. <laughs> so uh, please, you know, if you are able to, no pressure, but if you are able to, I like for some, like for instance, someone emailed us the other week and they're like, hey, I can't commit to a weekly thing or a monthly thing, but like, can I do a one-time thing? Like yeah. hey, you don't have to, but if you are able to, we would greatly appreciate any support. Otherwise, make sure you follow us on our socials. You can find me at Sujo one on TikTok and Instagram. And you can find me at Etch Sketch with a J on all of it. And you can find the podcast at What in the Shiba. And uh, make sure you write in at What in the Shiba at gmail.com. Otherwise, thank you for joining in. And we'll see you on the next one. Wait, oh, you didn't do the YouTube thing. Oh, yeah. Also, if you are watching us on YouTube, thank you. And please make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, okay bye. bye. Oh, did you <laughs> yeah. That's that's why we're doing that's this. That's why we do this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye.